So for this episode, I'm reviewing the straight to video masterpiece that is Theodore Rex. And there's actually kind of a story leading up to me doing this review. After about five minutes of sitting down and watching Theodore Rex, I felt so horrible that I actually thought about destroying my TV. But I decided to start drinking instead. What I wasn't expecting was just how boring the movie actually was and how much of a challenge it would prove to be to just maintain consciousness throughout the viewing. When I woke up, I had no idea what was going on in the movie and had forgotten everything I had just watched. I also realized that nothing I had written during my drunken viewing really made any sense and it was mostly just a bunch of belligerent rambling. So I had to watch the movie all over again and start from scratch. Also, fair warning, I'm gonna have to drink while filming this review as well, so... Well, we might as well just get that train rolling down the tracks already. Honestly, it's probably not a good idea for me to be drinking while filming a review. The last time I did it, editing was just terrible. I was slurring so many words, there was entire takes that were just unusable. I had to edit around all that crap, but I'm feeling good today, so we're gonna throw caution to the wind. And I told Derek on Twitter I would do a shot for him right off the bat, so we might as well get that started. And here we go. There's probably gonna be pizza flying in here at some point too. I'm excited for that. Usually I get started by talking about the poster for the movie, but I mean, look at this thing. It's made with like MS Paint. And honestly, I don't even blame them. What else were they supposed to do? How else are you supposed to market this movie? I really can't think of any way to make a poster for this movie that would make it look exciting. Or make people look at it and go, oh yeah, that's next date night for sure. So the movie starts with the words, once upon a time in the future, bet you're excited now. And then it goes on to explain that a billionaire is launching a missile to kill everyone on Earth and start a new ice age and keep a pair of all the animals in an ark. So if you haven't realized you've made a huge mistake by this point and aren't currently in the process of turning the movie off, You've either been kidnapped and are being subjected to some kind of weird movie torture, or you've just waited your whole life to see Whoopi Goldberg and a dinosaur team up in a buddy cop movie. Or you're watching the movie for the same reason as me and are currently pouring your next drink. And if that's the case, make it a double. Trust me. So the movie starts off in black and white with Elaine's psychiatrist sending a butterfly towards a dinosaur which then suddenly explodes. Oh good, it was only a dream. For a second there, I thought I was watching a bad movie. But then it turns out that it wasn't a dream. It actually happened. So Theodore Rex goes on to investigate the murder. And by the way, I'm just gonna tell you right now, there's no explanation as to why he could see that in his dream. You think there'd be some kind of weird connection thing? Go nope, just coincidence. And he seems pretty upbeat for someone who just had a dream that another dinosaur got murdered and then found out there was an actual murder. Now, based on the dialogue, Whoopi Goldberg is some kind of android police officer, and in this scene, her and this other officer climb up on this roof in order to arrest some criminals after they commit the crime. I just, I don't understand this. I mean, they were on the rooftop waiting for the crime to happen. How did they know the crime was going to happen? Is this like Minority Report? And if it is, how about you be more like Minority Report and stop the crime before it happens? Six minutes in and something clearly doesn't make sense. So obviously we're off to a great start with this one. As you would expect, Teddy is a dinosaur and he has quite a large tail. Something that the movie keeps reminding you of constantly. Yes, we get it. The tail gets in the way of stuff. You don't have to keep going back to the same joke over and over again. Kind of like I do sometimes. But then again, I don't... I don't have $33 million to do this show. You give me $33 million to do this show, I will put out a video every, okay, two videos every week. Almost said every day there, that was pretty scary. Sorry to barge in, excuse me. Teddy? And I like this guy's reaction. It's almost as if he's confused at first and doesn't recognize him. But Teddy? I mean, how many dinosaur cops do you know? And I should also mention that Teddy is crazy for cookies for some reason, which they are serving at this fancy dinner for some reason. So they team him up with Whoopi to solve the murder case, and she's not too happy about it at first. I mean, she just can't seem to get over the fact that he's a dinosaur. That is in public relations, but I feel promoting him temporarily. He's a dinosaur. Come on. He's a dinosaur. Come on. He's a dinosaur. You're not a species, are you? 
a specious. You know, <laughs> the funny thing about that is I bet back when they wrote that into the script, they probably thought it was pretty funny, but they had no clue that 20 years later, a specious would actually be a thing. I'm serious, just somebody check Tumblr, because it's bound to be on there somewhere. This movie tries to make so many bad dinosaur jokes and puns that even the characters don't understand them. You don't even look like a detective. Oh, sir, please. You cannot judge a dino by his scales. What? At this point in the movie, Teddy says that he needs to go undercover for some reason, so he goes into this high-tech machine. And you'd think, being that this is the future and all, that maybe this machine will change his appearance entirely, make him look like a person maybe, but no, it just changes his clothes. That's all it does. And what is she typing here? Does she know what she's typing? Because there's nothing on the monitor here, just some lights, and it appears as though she just keeps typing non-stop through the whole thing. Finally, they find the perfect disguise, which is more or less pretty much the exact kind of outfit he was wearing before. And Whoopi says it's perfect. He looks like a real cop. So you mean to tell me that he didn't look like a real cop when he was wearing a sweater, jacket, and pants, but now he looks like a real cop? because he's wearing a sweater, jacket, and pants. And also, I thought the point of going undercover was to not look like a cop. Now they get their new vehicle, which happens to be a garbage truck. Why? What, is this part of the undercover ruse? Okay, well that makes sense. I'm sure no one will ever take a second look at the garbage truck that has the police logo printed all over it, and also has a person dressed like a police officer driving it. So they go to this place called New Eden, which is owned by the billionaire guy who wants to kill everyone, and ask him some questions because both the dead dinosaur and the guy from the beginning worked for him. And he just basically shrugs his shoulders because as an audience, we know he's behind this whole thing because the movie told us at the very beginning, which I still think was an unbelievably bad idea. I mean, this story is a crime mystery, so why would you start that off by revealing the perpetrator and explaining their plan? Molly wants you to walk her home in its purely police business. What was I, hatched yesterday? Hatched yesterday? You know, I'm having some trouble figuring out exactly what her character is. From just a few lines of dialogue in the beginning of the movie, I've concluded that she's an android, but now with this hatched yesterday line? So she's a robot that was hatched? Like from an egg? What? Then there's more dialogue that makes no sense and really has no point being in the movie. Tip toe. Stop with the tip tip. Don't tip tip. Just tip toe. And okay. what is that smell? Is that you? It's not me. How could it be me? Did you? Look, I didn't butt trumpet. One of these fine, things is leaking. Fine. So they're looking for the toy maker, which is this guy who created the butterfly bomb from the beginning of the movie. When they run into this thing, there's some bug that turns into a butterfly and leads them to the toy maker. I swear, there are points in this movie where it's obvious that Whoopi hated being in this thing and just did not care. And then they confront the toy maker while he's handling giant weapons which seems like the smart thing to do. So he disappears somewhere and sets a bug bomb to detonate. Even though the entire place explodes, they somehow manage to be unscathed and capture the guy, which seems really lame, but then again, who's surprised? After a grueling interrogation, which basically comprised of him being breathed on, farted on, and turned upside down, he tells them that Edge bought the butterfly. So they show up to Edge's compound in their totally inconspicuous garbage truck, and one of the bad guys, I don't know what these things are, clones or something, comes outside and points this gun at them, and they decide to talk about food. Really? This doesn't cause alarm at all? So I guess somehow they tied the clone up to the front of the garbage truck and rammed it through the door? Really, I would have liked to have seen that scene, actually. I mean, how did they manage to do that when he already had his gun drawn on them? But then again, including things that make sense is a trait of a good movie. And as we all know, good movies is not the name of this show. So after Whoopi starts talking to the bad guys and they don't shoot her for whatever reason, they go find the billionaire in some kind of stupid helicopter contraption. At this point in watching the movie, I checked the runtime and saw that there was 20 minutes left. And I held on to hope that maybe just maybe the closing credits would take up 15 minutes of it.
but no such luck. I was still going to have to grind through things like watching Whoopi somehow incapacitate three clones by merely kicking a gun out of one of their hands. So the billionaire launches his missile and explains that it will kill everyone and start a new Ice Age, even though we already knew that. So Edge gets into a gunfight with Whoopi and sparks fly everywhere. Here's another scene in which I think Whoopi just pretty much mailed it in and I couldn't care less. I was wrong. <sighs> Your brain. Use your brain. So now there's just a slew of ridiculous things like Teddy managing to lasso the car seat of the billionaire and hang him up in a tree, which just leaves the guy helpless for some reason to stop Teddy from grabbing the remote to the bomb and the Jeep crashing into a billboard, which causes it to explode for some reason. Now, like I mentioned before, this movie went straight to video and at the time was the most expensive straight to video movie ever made with a budget of 33.5 million dollars. Apparently Whoopi Goldberg had agreed to do the movie years ago and then tried to back out of it but eventually agreed to do the movie for seven million dollars. So how bad is this movie? It's bad enough that even if I was a kid I don't think I could find a way to enjoy it. Yes even kid me the fanboy of many things would have hated this movie. It's so weird to think that as a kid I liked most movies. I was just generally pretty positive and optimistic about things. I just don't know what the hell happened to me. There's probably gonna be pizza flying in here at some point. I can... There's prob... There's probably gonna be... There's probably gonna be pizza flying.